Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Cass High School in White, Georgia, as the Cass Colonels tonight will be taking on the River Ridge Knights in a Region 7 Quad A South matchup. Game two of a three-game series, River Ridge behind the left arm of Jackson Weig last night shut out the Colonels 3 to nothing in Woodstock over at River Ridge to take game one in this series. Game two here tonight, and then game three will be back at River Ridge on Friday as these two square off in three games this week in Region 7 Quad A South action. We'll take our first time out of the evening, and we'll be back to talk about tonight's game right after these messages. Ladies and gentlemen, if you got anything from me, it's to find your thing and do you. Because we all know it's not what you do, it's how you do. And this is how we do. Cass High School, you see the River Ridge Knights out on the field taking their pregame warm-up. We want to take a few minutes to look around the region and take a look at the region standings as things are winding down and we move toward the playoffs in 7 Quad A. Here's a look at the region standings up to date. First of all, in the south side, Cedartown, who is idle this week as far as region games are concerned, they have some non-region games with uh, on Friday and Saturday at Chattooga on Friday and at Coosa on Saturday. Of course, those games will not count in the region standings, so they are 6-3 and three, and on top of the region standings going in to next week, which will be the final week of sub-region play, Cass and River Ridge are directly behind them at 4-3. and three. So uh, if either of these teams were to win the next two games, uh, they would be in a an, an exact head-to-head -head tie with Cedartown going into the final week of the season. Gilmer, who beat Pickens in a two-to-one game last night, uh, is in fourth place at five and five, and they're still in the playoff hunt, as you can tell. And then Pickens brings up the rest of the subregion at one and six, seven and nine overall. If you look at the north side, the two front runners are playing each other this week. They're playing game two tonight. Northwest won the first game last night by 10 runs over Dalton uh, to move to 10 and 0 in region play. Dalton follows at nine and one. Heritage of Catoosa County is five and three, followed by Lafayette at three and seven. Southeast Whitfield and Ridgeland bring up the rest of seven quad A North. So that's a look at where we are in the region standings as we enter play tonight. Most of the schools have moved their Thursday game up to tonight, trying to beat the weather that is coming in overnight tonight and throughout most of the day expected in this area on Thursday. Some bad uh, rain and uh, stormy weather coming through. So most of these schools moving the game up, trying to uh, get the series in this week uh, without having to double up on either Friday or Saturday. Upcoming schedule for the Colonels and our play on schedule. We will be at River Ridge on Friday evening for game three of this series. And right now we're only planning to bring the home game of the Cedartown series. Of course, that could change with the outcome of some of these games. 
And uh, if the Colonels can't qualify for the region playoff series, uh, we will, of course, be broadcasting those on April the 24th, uh, scheduled for a double header, and then an if game on that Thursday, the 25th, if necessary, in the region playoff series. So that's a look at the upcoming schedule. That's a look at the region standings as we uh, move into the final days of the Region 7 Quad A South race. We're going to take another break, and we'll be back uh, with lineups for tonight's game right after this. Now when the sun come up, I'll be there to say what up in the morning. Perfectly at peace, so I move along a bit higher. I'll be up a bit away, up a bit away, cause they don't judge me anyway. So whatever, I'll be up a bit away, up a bit away. Crack open a can of new Kickstart by Mountain Dew. The perfect mix of dew, real fruit juice, and just the right amount of kick. Kickstart your day. Back at Cass High School where the head coaches are out on the field meeting with our umpiring crew for tonight, exchanging their lineup cards and also uh, going over the ground rules here at Cass. While they do that, we want to take just a second and thank our sponsors for this 2013 season, Pepsi, our local Pepsi distributor, and their Kickstart Morning product as well as Mountain Dew, our anchor sponsors for the 2013 season. And also WYXC Radio and Liberty Tax Service helping to bring these games to you. So we want to thank those sponsors for the 2013 CAS baseball season. Let's give you the starting lineup for the River Ridge Knights. Leading off and playing right field will be Tyler Thigpen. He was the DH in last night's game. Batting second will be the left fielder, Zach Wilkin. Batting third will be the third baseman, John Cable. Hitting fourth, the shortstop, Will Redding. He was two for three last night. He'll be in the cleanup spot. The five hitter is the first baseman, Elijah Bragg. Batting sixth will be Ian Andrews. He'll play second base. Batting seventh will be the designated hitter tonight, Austin Stanley, getting his first start in the series. He will hit for the center fielder, Zach Loveless. Batting eighth will be the pitcher for tonight, Dalton Martin. And hitting ninth will be the catcher for the Knights, Zach Cable. He had a hit last night in two at-bats. We'll take a look at the... Colonels, how they will line up defensively. We'll give you that first of all. Across the outfield, Hunter Bennett, Chris Morton, and Alex Yoslin. 
Then in the infield, starting at first base, Dylan Williams, Matt Brown will man second, Sam Ayers will be at shortstop, and Hunter Southern will be at third base. Chaz Wilson will be the catcher behind the plate, and the pitcher in game two for Coach Adam Williams will be Brandon Etheridge, the junior right-hander. That gives us time uh, here to run through the Colonel's batting order now. If we can locate that graphic for you. Here we go. Brandon Etheridge will lead it off and pitch. Uh, he is hitting, uh, as you see there, 383 on the year with 12 stolen bases leading the team. Uh, hitting second, Sam Ayers. Chaz Wilson will hit third. Dylan Williams will be in the four spot. Sam Russell will bat fifth. Hitting four, Matt Brown. He's the designated hitter. Alex Yoslin will hit in the sixth spot and be in right field. Hunter Southern will man third and bat seventh. Hunter Bennett will be in left field hitting eighth. And Chris Morton will hit in the ninth spot and be in right field. Both teams are out on the field for tonight's anthem. We'll take a break and we'll be back with baseball right after this. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. Stream, camera three, beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. Back at Cass High School where the Colonels are about to take on the River Ridge Knights in game two of a three-game series between River Ridge and Cass in seven quad A South. These two teams tied for the number two spot currently in the sub-region standings behind Cedartown who has a one-game lead. Uh, the three teams are tied on the loss column, uh, but of course Cedartown has six wins. These two teams who are one three-game series behind this week uh, are at four wins apiece, so uh, a really important contest for both of these teams uh, as we are in the next to last week of region play in seven quad A South. The Colonels are being introduced and making their way out onto the field, so we are uh, just a few moments away from baseball. We'll take one last time out, and we'll be back with tonight's first pitch right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, if you got anything from me, it's to find your thing and do you. Because we all know it's not what you do, it's how you do. And this is how we do. Back at Cass High School where Brandon Etheridge is out on the mound taking his warm-up tosses for tonight's 7 quad a matchup with the River Ridge Knights. Brandon Etheridge on the year. One and three on the season with a 4.09 ERA. 
He's appeared in seven games, 25 and two-thirds innings pitched on the year. One final warm-up toss, long throw down to second base by the Colonel's catcher, Chaz Wilson. They toss it around the infield, and we'll be ready to go. River Ridge will send Tyler Thigpen, Zach Wilkin, and John Cable to the plate here in the top of the first to face Brandon Etheridge. Glad you could join us for Cass Baseball, presented by Mountain Dew. We're on the Play On Sports Network and GHSA.TV. Wind up and delivery from Etheridge is right in there for a strike. Off to a good start with strike number one. Thick Ben 0 for 1 last night with a walk. It was a very quick game. Jackson Wieg and Dylan Williams on the mound for their respective teams and both pitched very well as Etheridge misses with a ball. Three runs by the Knights in the bottom of the second was the difference. It was a three to nothing final. Next pitch by Etheridge is a fastball right through there, swing and a miss. And the count is at one and two. Etheridge looks in for his sign. He winds and delivers, and it's fouled back off the home plate umpire, and it caught him on the forearm. And he's in quite a bit of pain, so Chaz Wilson, the cast catcher, will make his way out and give this umpire a little time as Coach Williams also walks out to take a look at him. And I know the athletic trainer is on campus today, but we have several events going. And she may be at one of the other locations. So we're going to have a little break here as this umpire is going to need a moment or two to shake off that foul ball. We'll tell you that Dalton Martin will be the starting pitcher for River Ridge in this one in his last two outings. A total of four and a third innings, and he's only given up a couple of runs on three hits. One walk and five strikeouts in those last two appearances. So this apparently is going to take another moment or so, so we're going to take a brief time out. And they've gone to get some ice for the umpire to help him out there. So we're going to take a break. And we'll be back uh, with more baseball right after this. Okay, back at Cass High School, our umpire is um, still hurting just a little bit, but uh, they got some ice to him and have some more ice on the way, an ice bag, and he's going to tough it out and get back in there. So the one-two pitch now from Etheridge bounces up there for ball number two. So our count is at two and two, and our brief delay there was because uh, a foul ball was hit back off our umpire's forearm. And Etheridge's 2-2 pitch is fouled back over the screen. So we'll try that again. Leadoff hitter Tyler Thigpen playing right field tonight for the Knights of River Ridge. Their overall record may not look that pretty 
And there's a good curveball by Etheridge for strike number three. And the first out of the inning. As I was saying, the overall record for the Knights may not look very pretty, but they have played a lot of 5 and 6A schools over in Cherokee County and the surrounding area. But they fared quite well in sub-region play. So they come in here with a matching 4-3 and three record with the Colonels. Second hitter for the Knights is Zach Wilkin, the left fielder. Looks at a ball high. Etheridge working from the windup. Sells another fastball high, and the count's gone to 2-0. and oh. John Cable, the third baseman, waits on deck. Wilkin was 0 for 2 last night. Hitting in the second spot for the second game in a row, and he looks at a fastball over the inside corner. So the count is now at two and one. And Etheridge delivers another fastball that's fouled back over the screen for strike number two. So Wilkin will step back in and Etheridge delivers a curveball that got away from him a bit. Had no bite on it and sailed high for ball three. And the next pitch is hit in the air out toward left field. Hunter Bennett has a beat on it, gets underneath and makes the catch for the second out of the inning. So two down now, and that will bring up the number three hitter, John Cable, the third baseman. Cable, 0 for 3 last night in game one. Left-handed hitter. We've seen him play both first base and third base for the Knights in games this year. Takes the first pitch high for a ball. Next one is high as well. They're going to ask and see if he swung, but the base umpire's down behind first base. It would be almost impossible for him to tell. And the next one is hit in the air out toward left field. Shortstop Sam Ayers goes back. He makes the catch as Hunter Bennett slides underneath him, trying to stay out of the way, but he still tripped up Ayers. But Ayers made the catch. And that will be out number three and end the first inning with no run scored. So River Ridge fails to score in the top of the first. The Colonels are coming to bat. Now when the sun come up, I'll be there to say what up in the morning. So I move along a bit higher I'll be up a bit away Up a bit away Cause they gon' judge me anyway So whatever Crack open a can of new Kickstart by Mountain Dew The perfect mix of dew, real fruit juice, and just the right amount of kick Kickstart your day Back at Cass High School where Dalton Martin has taken the mound for the Knights here in game two. He will be the starter for River Ridge. The Knights failed to score in their half of the first inning. And the Colonels will now come to the plate in the bottom half of the first. Had a bit of an incident in the top half of the inning with the first batter up there. A foul tip went straight back to the umpire's forearm, caught him squarely on the forearm, and we had a little timeout while he had to re recover. But he, uh, to his credit, battled through that, went back out there and got through the remainder of the half inning. Now the trainer that's on site here for the 
events that are going on here today. We've got a track and field meet going on in the stadium and in this baseball game here next door. So the trainer that was on campus today has made her way over and has taken a look at this umpire's arm. So we've got a bit of a delay moving into the bottom of the first. Batting order for the Colonels will be Brandon Etheridge followed by Sam Ayers and then Chaz Wilson. And we're getting word now that the two-man umpire crew that is here today is going to swap out. And the, well, maybe not. Now we're getting an indication that they may stay just like they are. We were afraid we were going to take a timeout. And now we are. So these umpires are going to switch positions and the uh, umpire that was behind the plate will move to the bases and vice versa. So that's going to give us a little bit of time here. So we'll take a timeout, a commercial timeout, and we'll be back uh, with more baseball after these messages. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot. At this. Back at Cass High School, we're in a delay here between the two halves of the first inning. River Ridge failed to score in their half of the first. The Colonels are yet to come to the plate. Our home plate umpire was hit on the forearm in the top half of the first inning. So uh, the two umpires that are here have gone back uh, to their dressing area and will swap positions. The umpire that was out in the field will put his gear on and move behind the plate. And the umpire that was behind the plate that was hit on the forearm is going to have the rest of the evening out uh, covering the bases. So uh, we're in a bit of a delay while we wait on the umpiring crew uh, to switch out. So that'll give us a chance. Uh, we kind of rushed through this earlier. That'll give us a chance to go through the Colonel's batting order here in the bottom half of the first. Brandon Etheridge, who is pitching tonight, will lead it off. He leads the team with 12 stolen bases on the year. Sam Ayers 
will hit second uh, with 13 RBI, followed by the catcher, Chaz Wilson, hitting 475 on the year with 24 RBI. Dylan Williams, the first baseman, will hit in the four spot, followed by the designated hitter, Sam Russell, hitting for the second baseman, Matt Brown. Russell hitting 333 with 11 RBI. Alex Yoslin will hit sixth and be in right field. Uh, he has six RBI on the year and hitting 241. Hunter Southern, who has three two-out RBI on the year and has scored eight runs, will hit in the seventh spot. Hunter Bennett will be in left field. He's scored nine runs on the year from that spot. And Chris Morton, who has a 426 on base percentage from the nine hole and has scored 13 runs, will hit in that nine spot for Coach Adam Williams. Still just a, a few minutes away from our umpiring crew making their way back out to the field. So that'll give us a chance to take another break. And uh, we'll be back hopefully with some more baseball in just a moment. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. A Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? You start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com SBP. Back at Cass High School, we're in a first inning delay on a beautiful afternoon. Our home plate umpire was hit on the forearm in the top half of the first inning, and our two umpires that are here this afternoon are going to switch positions. So they had to go back to their dressing area, and the plate umpire had to remove his gear uh, and uh, switch out with the other umpire who will now take over the duties behind the plate. That gives us a chance to tell you that you can follow the Colonels all season long on social media. They're on Facebook at Cass High School Baseball, and the Twitter handle for the Colonels is at Cass Baseball. You also see their website is CassBaseball.net. And then the National Play on Network also is all over social media as well. We'll share that with you. You see that they're on Facebook.com slash Play On Sports. The Twitter handle is Play On Sports. And you can also pick up many of these contests uh, on the YouTube network as well. And you see the connection there is YouTube.com slash Play On Network. So lots of ways to follow high school action now. Uh, with the Play On Sports Network. 
gives us another chance to say a very special thank you to our sponsors for Cast Baseball on Play on Sports, our local Pepsi distributor with their Mountain Dew and Kickstart products, as well as WYXC Radio and the Liberty Tax Service. We want to thank them for bringing us these Cass baseball games during the 2013 season. Well, both teams are still in their dugout. We're waiting for the umpires to make their appearance once again. I'm sure our pitcher will be given a little bit of time. Dalton Martin, the pitcher for River Ridge, had just taken the mound, and he'll be given a few minutes to uh, get loose again when they return to the field. So we're going to take another break, and we'll be back hopefully with baseball after this. Ladies and gentlemen, if you got anything from me, it's to find your thing and do you. Because we all know it's not what you do, it's how you do. And this is how we do. Still waiting the appearance of our umpires. We have seen them back in the field area. So uh, again, they are seeing the trainer that's over there in the cast dugout area. We have played the top half of the first inning. Uh, River Ridge went three up and three down. Uh, but now the Colonels will be coming to the plate. As soon as we get our umpires back on the field, our home plate umpire and with the first batter of the game up there, took a foul ball off the forearm, uh, and we took a pretty lengthy little break there as he tried to recover. He came back out on the field, finished the half inning, but then the trainer was able to get over here from the stadium where there's a track meet going on, took a look at it, and then the decision was made that the two umpires would switch positions. So when that occurred, there had to be a wardrobe change. So we're in about a, what was going to be about a five minute delay. Now it's closer to 10 minutes as we wait on uh, the umpires to make their way back out onto the field in their switched positions. So Cass has yet to bat in this one and they will be coming to the plate as soon as we resume play. And whenever we do, we're going to have to give Dalton Martin, the pitcher for River Ridge, a few minutes to uh, get loose again out there on the mound. I, I would assume he will be given all the time he needs to get ready. So it looks like uh, that's going to be taking place here in just a second. So we're going to take one more time out. Hang in there with us. We're going to have baseball soon. And uh, we'll be back with baseball after this.
Now when the sun come up, I'll be there to say what up in the morning. Perfectly at peace, so I move along a bit higher. Crack open a can of new Kickstart by Mountain Dew. The perfect mix of dew, real fruit juice, and just the right amount of kick. Kickstart your day. Back at Cass High School, and it looks like we are now ready for some action as Brandon Etheridge, the Colonel's leadoff hitter, makes his way toward the plate to face River Ridge starter Dalton Martin. Long delay between the top of the first and now the bottom of the first, but we're back underway as our umpires have switched positions after the injury to the first home plate umpire. First pitch is swung on and missed. So Etheridge digs back in there down a strike. And that one hit him on the hill, so he'll make his way down to first. After being hit by the pitch. So that'll bring up the senior shortstop, Sam Ayers. Sam Ayers digs in as Etheridge takes his lead down at first. They throw over, and he gets away. So Etheridge is going to move up at least a second. He's on his way to third. He rounds the back. He's headed to third, and he's going to be in there standing up, takes a turn, and will wait at third base as the throwing error gets by the first baseman. And as we've mentioned on many of these broadcasts, there's a lot of foul territory here uh, at Cass High School. So that throwing error allows Etheridge to make it away, all the way around to third. So the Colonels, with a little something going here, nobody out, and their leadoff hitter all the way at third with Sam Ayers at the plate. First pitch to Ayers, hit on the ground, and off the third baseman sharply, and it'll be an infield hit for Sam Ayers. So a very hard hit ground ball right off the one hopped off the chest of Cable. And we'll give Ayers a hit there on the infield. And it drives in Etheridge. So the Colonels break on top one to nothing. And the catcher, Chaz Wilson, steps to the plate. Wilson hitting 475 on the year. First pitch, bounces up there. Ayers is off and running and slides in safely with the steal. So the Colonels, who have played very well at home this year, are off to another good start. Wilson taking his signs from his head coach, Adam Williams, down at third. Ayers taking a lead down at second. And the pitch to Wilson missed outside. Wilson takes another long look down there at his head coach, Williams. 
giving signs to both he and Sam Ayers, who's taking a lead down at second. 2-0 pitch now to Wilson. Is hit in the air out towards center field. Center fielder turned one way, now turns back the other, makes the catch, and Ayers will have to hold at second base. So it's a fly ball out for the first out of the inning. Zach Loveless turned really in the wrong direction, but then found the baseball, got underneath it for out number one. And it brings up first baseman Dylan Williams. He's hitting 367 on the year with 10 RBI. And he hit it in the air out toward left center field. Left fielder running hard, going back there. And that one's out of here. So Dylan Williams hits his first home run of the year. And that will give the Colonels a 3 to nothing lead. So a long fly ball home run by Dylan Williams and the Colonels have taken a three to nothing lead. Two hits now for the Colonels as well. And now we're gonna get a visit to the mound by the River Ridge coaching staff. So while he does that, Coach Adam Williams, again, will take advantage of that time to talk with his next hitter, the designated hitter, Sam Russell. So Cass is broken on top here with a two-run home run from Dylan Williams, giving Cass now a three-to-nothing lead. Sam Russell digs in now. Still just one out in the inning. And he offers to bunt and fouls it back to the screen. Russell, the designated hitter, hitting in the five spot. Hitting 333 on the season. Next pitch from Martin is a breaking ball that is in there for a strike. So Russell finds himself in an 0 2 hole as Martin delivers high for ball one. Alex Yoslin playing right field tonight waits on deck. Martin's next pitch is hit on the ground, out past third, deep in the shortstop hole, long throw, and it will not get him. So that's another infield hit. So the Colonels, with just two infield hits and a bomb from Dylan Williams, they've taken a three to nothing lead, and that's their third hit of the game. So a couple of uh, dinks, as they called them, but actually Sam Ayers hit his pretty hard right off uh, John Cable, the third baseman's chest down there. Brings up Yoslin, but before Martin comes to the plate, he steps off to look Russell back. One out here in the bottom of the first. Cass has taken a three to nothing lead. They pitch out. They thought maybe something was going there. Nothing happening. So now Yoslin steps back in to face a 1 0 pitch from Martin that missed high. Yoslin, with a 241 average on the year, he scored seven runs, 
He has six RBI. Next pitch is drilled out toward left field, right at the left fielder. Russell was running on the play, and he'll be chased all the way back to first, but he gets back in time. Yoslin hit that one on the nose, but right at the left fielder, Zach Wilkin, for out number two. So two down now, and that brings up the Colonel's third baseman, junior third baseman, Hunter Southern. They pitch out again. And again, the Colonels didn't have anything going on the first pitch. Next pitch from Martin. Miss low and away. Russell broke as though he was going to take off, but then retreated back to first. So Southern now will step back in and face a 2-0 pitch from the Knights' starting pitcher, Dalton Martin. Fastball that missed high. And the count is now at 3-0. Two outs in the inning. Cass has struck for three runs here. A couple of infield hits and a long home run by Dylan Williams. Has Cass on top. Fastball over the plate at the knees for strike number one. Left fielder Hunter Bennett waits on deck if Southern can keep the inning going. They throw over to first. Sam Russell dives back in safely on the attempted pickoff. So Martin looks over, now comes set, and his 3-1 pitch misses high for ball four. So Hunter Southern works Martin for a walk. Runners now at first and second, and it brings up left fielder Hunter Bennett. Not sure if you can see it out there, but our original home plate umpire wearing an ice bag on his forearm out there working the bases. He was in quite a bit of pain. First pitch is hit on the ground out towards short. Shovel over to second. And there is out number three as Redding fields it cleanly and tosses it over to Andrews for the third out of the inning. But the Colonels do strike for three runs in their half of the first inning. On three hits, there was an error in the inning. And we played one inning now with the Cass Colonels leading the River Ridge Knights by a score of three to nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, if you got any things from me, it's to find your thing and do you. Because we all know it's not what you do, it's how you do. And this is how we do. We move to the top half of the second inning. Will Redding, the shortstop, will lead things off for the Knights, followed by Elijah Bragg and Ian Andrews. Redding had two of River Ridge's three hits last night in their three to nothing win over Cass. As we mentioned in the pregame, which seems like a long time ago after that middle of the first inning delay, these two teams are in a tie currently for second place in seven quad a south with four and three records they trail by one game cedartown who's at six and three and idle this week in sub-region play 
Will Redding, the shortstop, steps in. He was two for three last night, scored a run. Brandon Etheridge, with his first pitch, throws a fastball right down the middle at the knees for strike number one. Etheridge with the quick wind and another fastball that missed outside and low. So the count's gone even at one and one. Curveball from Etheridge. Sails high. And so far he's had trouble getting that curveball to bite for him. But he did work a 1-2-3 first inning. And there's a fastball over the outside corner for strike number two. So the Knights cleanup hitters digs back in. And the pitch from Etheridge is fouled back over the screen. So the count will remain at two and two. Cass Baseball on Play on Sports, presented by Mountain Dew. Another fastball from Etheridge, Miss Lowe. So we'll see a 3-2 pitch now. And it's hit up in the air over in foul territory. Dylan Williams drifts over and gets underneath it for the catch. And there is out number one. So the foul territory comes in play here again on the pop foul out that Dylan Williams is able to catch. So one out in the inning, and that brings up Elijah Bragg, the first baseman. Curveball, missed down and in. Bragg was 0 for 2 last night. He reached on an error in those back-to-back bunt plays, and he did later score a run, one of the three that the Knights were able to plate in the second inning. So Etheridge's pitch misses, and then Chaz Wilson missed Etheridge throwing it back out there. So the count's at 2-0 as Etheridge looks back in. And his fastball is right in there for a strike. Ian Andrews, the night's second baseman, waits on deck. Bragg squares as if to bunt but takes it high for ball three. So the count's gone to three and one. To the Knights first baseman. Next one's hit hard out toward first, but Dylan Williams is there to glove it. Steps on the bag and there's out number two. So it was hit on the nose, but right at the cast first baseman who fielded it cleanly, stepped on the bag and we have two outs in the inning. Brings up the second baseman, Ian Andrews. He was 0 for 3 last night. He, again, was one of the two that bunted and reached on errors. He later scored the third run of the game for the Knights. All of that action happened in the second inning in a 3 to nothing game. Because Jackson Wieg, the starting pitcher for the Knights, was very good. Shutting out the Colonels. Both pitches miss low. So Andrews steps back in, and the 2-0 pitch from Brandon Etheridge missed outside. Three O offering from Etheridge stayed in, and there is ball four. So that will bring up the designated hitter, Austin Stanley. Chaz Wilson makes his way out to the mound to have a brief chat with his pitcher, Brandon Etheridge. 
two outs in the inning. We're in the top of the second. Game two of a three-game set between the River Ridge Knights and the Cass Colonels. We're at Cass today. Game one was at River Ridge last night. Game three will be at River Ridge on Friday. Etheridge now working from the stretch for the first time. Fires a fastball strike at the knees. Austin Stanley did not appear in last night's game. He's the designated hitter today, hitting for center fielder Zach Loveless. Dylan Williams, the cast first baseman, holds the runner at first. And that one's hit on the nose out towards center field. Chris Morton's got a beat on it, runs underneath it, and makes the catch for out number three. So the Knights do get a base runner on a walk. They strand that runner. No hits in the inning. And we've played an inning and a half with Cass leading River Ridge 3-0. Cass leading River Ridge as they come to bat in the bottom half of the second inning. We're at Cass High School for game two of this three-game seven quad A South series. Three-game set between these two clubs this week. Cass with one more series remaining in the subregion schedule, and it's with the subregion leader, Cedartown, next week. They'll play at Cedartown on Tuesday and Friday, and the middle game of the series is scheduled for here at Cass on Thursday. River Ridge also tied with the Colonels for second place in the subregion. They have a three-game series remaining as well with Pickens, who's currently in the cellar of this subregion. So that makes this series even that much more important for the Colonels as their schedule is much tougher next week if you base that on uh, where the teams stand as as we speak. Cass will send the nine hitter Chris Mortens, the center fielder, to the plate to lead off the bottom of the second. And then we'll be back to the top of the order with Brandon Etheridge and Sam Ayers. So the Knights huddle around their pitcher, Dalton Martin. Chris Morton makes his way to the right-handed batter's box. And as the Knights return to their positions, we will be ready to begin the bottom of the second. 3-0, 3-0, Cass leads it with three runs in their half of the first. First pitch to Morton, misses low. Ball got away, so they have to retrieve that. Now Martin takes his sign and delivers again right through there for a strike. So the cast sophomore center fielder tonight gets a 1-1 pitch that's in there for another strike. And Martin now with two strikes on the hitter. Takes his sign, winds and delivers. Curveball that's hit on the ground into left field for a hit. (laughs) 
So Chris Morton leads off the Colonel second inning with a ground ball single into left field. And that brings up the top of the cast order. And their pitcher tonight, Brandon Etheridge. Etheridge man center field in the games he is not pitching. And has been very effective as the Colonel's leadoff hitter, hitting near 400 for most of the season, and he leads the team in stolen bases. Morton dives back in as Martin throws over. And now Martin working from the stretch, takes his sign, and Morton fainted towards second, and they threw through, but he went back to first. And the pitch missed for a ball. So now Martin takes his lead down at first. And the pitch to Etheridge is in there for a strike at the letters. <laughs> Elijah Brake, the Knights first baseman, holding the runner down there at first. And Etheridge fouled away a breaking ball. So the count's now at one and two to the Colonel's pitcher. Runner is moving this time. Ball hit on the ground out toward first. Bragg fields it cleanly, steps on the bag. But by putting the runner in motion, they, uh, they move the lead runner up to second. So Etheridge grounds out to first. But Morton is safe down at second with one out. Sam Ayers. Sam Ayers will step in. He had a infield hit in the first inning when he hit a hard, scalding one hopper off the chest of the Knights' third baseman for an infield hit. Martin's first pitch to Ayers missed everybody, sailed over the catcher's head to the backstop. Morton takes a big turn at third. But he'll stand there on the wild pitch. And the catcher, Zach Cable, talking with his pitcher, Martin, as though he was crossed up. He didn't even get a glove on that one. So Chris Morton has moved down to third with one out. Next pitch from Martin is a breaking ball that stayed high. Sam Ayers with 13 RBI on the year. He's hitting 382. And he just popped it up out behind second base. Right fielder charging, second baseman going back. He makes the catch, and now he'll run it back to the infield. And that's two outs. So a very high pop-up with the infield drawn in. The second baseman had to go way out to the back of the dirt. Right fielder was charging, but the second baseman, Andrews, makes the play just in the edge of the grass, runs it back in. Morton's unable to tag on the play. Two outs now, and it brings up the catcher, Chaz Wilson. First pitch to Wilson misses. Wilson flied out in his first at bat. Next one is hit into left field, past the diving third baseman for another hit. So the Colonels add on, tack on another run. 
And we'll get a courtesy runner now for the cast catcher. It will be Caleb Black, as has been the custom for the Colonels. So Caleb Black checks in to run for Chaz Wilson down at first. Wilson just drove in Chris Morton with the fourth Colonel run of the game. Dylan Williams homered his first time up, a two-run blast at about the 345 mark. Throw over to first to chase back Black. So two outs in the inning. And Martin comes set, delivers a fastball that's tipped back into the glove of Zach Cable for strike number one. Williams now with 12 RBI on the year. And he improved his 367 average with that first home run. So he's probably in the 375 area. Martin steps off again, looking black back to the bag. And he's still not happy with the sign from his catcher, Cable. So he'll take time and go out and have a chat with his pitcher. Cass scored uh, three runs in the top, in the bottom of the first, and they've scored one here in the bottom of the second. They lead it 4-0. Cass with five hits, and River Ridge scoreless still looking for their first hit. Williams steps back in. Breaking ball is fouled back against the screen. So the count has gone to one and two to the Colonel's first baseman. Williams, the tough luck loser last night in that three to nothing contest. Pitched really well. It's just that one bad inning for the Colonels that led to their loss. Next pitch to Williams is popped up back near the screen. Cable chases it to the backstop, but it's back over the screen for another foul ball. That one close to staying in play here. A lot of foul territory, a long way between home plate and the backstop here at Cass, and a lot of foul territory on each side. Dimensions here, 305 in the corners. 335 to 340 in the alleys and 365 to straightaway center field. Next pitch is a curveball hit on the ground out towards short, fielded there by Redding. He throws across to Bragg, and that will be out number three. So the ground ball out retires the Colonels in their half of the second inning. They did manage a run on two hits. There was one runner left. We've now played two innings from Cass High School. And Cass leads River Ridge four to nothing. Cass and River Ridge in game two of their three-game series this week. Tonight, we're at Cass High School where the Colonels 
lead River Ridge after two innings by a score of four to nothing. The Knights will send their eight, nine, and one hitters to the plate to face Cass Jr. right-hander Brandon Etheridge here in the top of the third. River Ridge will send their pitcher, Dalton Martin, the catcher, Zach Cable, and the leadoff hitting right fielder, Tyler Thickpen, to the plate in the third inning. So it looks like uh, we're going to get a pinch hitter already. That is number 12 that has stepped to the plate. Is that not number? No, it's 11. Michael Hampton. And he's down in the count, 0 and 2. So River Ridge making a move already. And in high school, where you can re enter a player one time, we don't know if they're removing their pitcher at this point or not. But Hampton is hitting here and swings and misses. The one-two pitch for strike number three. So one out in the inning, and the catcher, Zach Cable, who's hitting in the nine spot, will dig in to face Brandon Etheridge. Cable did have one of the hits for River Ridge last night. They only had three hits, but managed to win three to nothing. Curveball from Etheridge missed high. He's been able to show the curveball, but he's had a tough time throwing it for a strike, at least here in the third inning. Slipped, it looked like, as he threw that time and missed low for ball number two. So Cable. Steps back in, and Brandon Etheridge winds, deals, and nipped him on the arm. So a hit batsman, the catcher, will move down to first. So we do have one out in the inning. Coach uh, Adam Williams steps out to ask if maybe that hit the bat, but the umpire says no, it hit him on the arm. We'll get a courtesy runner for the catcher. That's number four, Hathaway. Travis Hathaway will run now at first base for the Knights catcher, Zach Cable, who reached on a hit by pitch. And that'll force Etheridge to work again from the stretch, facing the top of the order here, Tyler Thickpin, right fielder. They throw over to first, but the runner's not going anywhere. Thickpin struck out looking his first time. And Etheridge, with a strike there, is ahead of the hitter. Another pitch that sailed high. So the count has gone to one and one to the River Ridge right fielder. Fastball hit out into center field. Chris Morton is there. Camps underneath it as he backpedals. And there's out number two. So two outs in the inning, and that brings up the left fielder, Zach Wilkin. Wilkin, 0 for 2 last night. Flight out to left field earlier in this one, so he's 0 for 3 in the series. Etheridge comes set, and a good curveball there is in there for a strike. (laughs) 
So now two down in the inning as Etheridge continues to work from the stretch, and he throws another curveball in there for a strike. So suddenly he's found his curveball, and he's ahead of this hitter, 0-2. The 0-2 pitch is a fastball, popped up in the air, foul territory, past third. Everybody's chasing it, but it lands up on the visitor's side batting cage. And it's just a long strike. So everyone will return to their positions. Ayers, the shortstop, Bennett, the left fielder, and Southern, the third baseman, all chased it over there, but it was out of play. So we'll get another 0-2 pitch, and it's a curveball that really fooled Wilkin, swung very late for strike number three to end the inning. So the Knights get a base runner on a hit batsman, but they strand him at first. We'll go to the bottom of the third with the Colonels leading the Knights four to nothing. Now when the sun come up, I'll be there to say what up in the morning. Perfectly at peace, so I move along a bit higher. I'll be up a bit away, up a bit away, cause they go judge me anyway. So whatever, I'll be up a bit away, up a bit away. Crack open a can of new Kickstart by Mountain Dew. The perfect mix of dew, real fruit juice, and just the right amount of kick. Kickstart your day. Cass leads it as they come to bat in the third inning, four to nothing. Brandon Etheridge with three good innings of work so far for the Colonels, keeping the Knights hitless through three and off the scoreboard as well. Cass with four runs in their first two frames. Five hits in the inning, one of the big blows, a two-run homer by Dylan Williams in the first. They lead it here four to nothing. New pitcher now for the Knights will be um, Mike Hampton. He'll take over for starter Dalton Martin. He pinch hit for him in the top half of the inning, and he'll stay in now and take over duties on the mound. In the Gilmer series, Hampton was a starter and um, – Ran into trouble early. He's only got one-third of an inning pitched in that last series and gave up seven earned runs, including a couple of home runs. But we just watched him warm up. He, he has pretty good velocity, and he has Russell swinging and missing on the first one. Took a little off that one and got it in there for a called strike two. So the Colonel's designated hitter digs back in, down two strikes. And another breaking ball that Russell missed for strike number three. So Michael Hampton comes in, strikes out the first batter he faces on three pitches. And there's one out in the inning with the cast right fielder, Alex Yoslin, stepping to the plate. Yoslin hit it on a nose his first time up, but right at the left fielder, Zach Wilkin. So Yoslin looking for his first hit of the night, takes the ball high. Hunter Southern waits on deck for the Colonels. Next pitch from Hampton is a breaking ball that caught the top part of the strike zone. And the count is even at one and one. Hampton delivers, curveball popped up in the air, back behind second base. Second baseman Ian Andrews is there, makes the catch and there's out number two.
So on just six pitches, Michael Hampton records a couple of quick outs. And the number seven hitter for the Colonels, third baseman Hunter Southern will step in. And the first pitch is lined out toward right field. Center fielder comes across that loveless to make the play. And a seven pitch inning for Michael Hampton is quite effective as the Colonels go in order in the third. So we've played three complete innings from Cass High School. And the Colonels lead the River Ridge Knights by a score of four to nothing. Scored three runs in the first inning, one in the second. Failed to score in the third frame, but they lead it here four to nothing as we move to the fourth inning. River Ridge will send their three, four, and five hitters, the meat of the order, Cable, Redding, and Bragg, to face Brandon Etheridge here in the top of the fourth. First pitch from Etheridge is fouled back over the screen. John Cable, the batter, flied out, popped out to the shortstop his first time. Takes a curveball low. He was 0 for 3 last night, so he's 0 for 4 in the series. And that's uncharacteristic. He's a good hitter. Takes a fastball strike at the knees. So the count has gone to one and two. And the curveball is swung on and missed. And a very nice pitch there by Etheridge. Strikes out John Cable. So that's now four strikeouts by Brandon Etheridge. Brings up Will Redding, the shortstop. And he looks at a fastball strike. Next pitch by Etheridge is right in there again in a perfect spot, about knee high over the outside edge. So he's quickly ahead 0-2 to the cleanup hitting shortstop for the Knights, and a slow curveball stayed high. Elijah Bragg would be next. There's a curveball in there for a strike. And there's out number two. And Redding didn't think that was a strike. So that brings up Elijah Bragg, the first baseman. The second of the Knights left-handed hitters in this order, John Cable the other one. Fastball from Etheridge. Blew right by him. Etheridge working quickly. Throws another fastball. Hit late by Bragg. Fouled away over the third base dugout where the Knights are housed this evening. 
So he's ahead 0-2, and, and his curveball missed high. Just kind of fluttered out of his hand, and we've seen him do that quite a bit tonight. But then at other times, we've seen a very sharp breaking curveball. And there it is. And the entire infield started moving toward the dugout, but it was not called a strike. So the count's even at two and two. And the next pitch from Etheridge is fouled back against the screen. Second baseman Ian Andrews waits on deck. And the pitch from Etheridge is again fouled back to the screen. Each of these teams, four and three in seven quad A South, battling for the number two spot in the subregion standings. This is game two of a three game series. Curveball hit down the right field line, but hooking foul. as Bragg was able to catch up with that breaking pitch, but pulled it well foul over the fencing in the right field area. So another 2-2 pitch is due to the first baseman, and it plunked him. So that's a couple of hit batsmen. to go with his five strikeouts. And it brings up the second baseman, Ian Andrews, with two outs in the inning. Bragg taking his lead down at first. They throw over to check on him. But he's back easily. Beautiful day here. Broken clouds, plenty of sunshine, a little breezy. Temperatures have been in the low 80s today. Another attempted breaking pitch by Etheridge that got away. Chaz Wilson able to chase it down behind the hitter Andrews. one pitch, the fastball fouled back to the screen. So Etheridge takes a deep breath and retoes the rubber. He's working from the stretch here with the runner down at first. And he throws a curveball that missed low and away. So the count's now at two and one as Andrews digs back in. Etheridge comes set, and his 2-1 pitch missed outside. Wilson tries to throw behind the runner, but he's back easily. Thought they might catch Brake sleeping down there, but he's back easily. And now a 3-1 pitch is due to the Knights' second baseman. And it's a fastball that he fouled back over the screen. So now with two outs in the inning, the Knights' first base coach having a chat with his runner, Elijah Bragg, you would think that Bragg would be off and running as soon as Etheridge delivers to the plate. It's often a good time to throw over there, and they do. But Bragg wasn't going anywhere, and he's back easily. So now a 3-2 pitch to Andrews is hit foul over the third base dugout. So we'll try the 3-2 offering once again. Two outs in the inning. Etheridge comes set, and his pitch is pitched straight up in the air. And I couldn't even find that one. 
but it went straight back over the backstop and sailed behind the seating area right here behind home plate, but short of the press box. So the count remains three and two. Good battle here between Etheridge and Andrews. And the pitch is hit up in the air, out toward right field. Yoslin is there, makes the catch, and there's out number three. So the Knights strand a runner who was hit by a pitch. They're still looking for their first hit in this one as we played three and a half with the Colonels leading the Knights four to nothing. We move to the bottom half of the fourth inning with Cass leading River Ridge four to nothing. Cass, four runs on five hits. They've not made an error. River Ridge has committed an error. They're still looking for their first hit as we will move to the Cass half of the fourth inning. The Colonels will send their eight, nine, and one hitters to the plate. Left fielder Hunter Bennett, center fielder Chris Morton, and pitcher Brandon Etheridge. Michael Hampton, who was very effective in the bottom of the third inning with a three up and three down inning on only seven pitches, remains in the game to pitch here in the fourth. He replaced starter Dalton Martin. First pitch hit in the air out into left field and it will fall for a base hit. So Hunter Bennett gets the Colonels off to a good start. And that brings up the number nine hitter and center fielder, Chris Morton. Colonels now with six hits in the contest. Throw over, chases back Bennett. But he slides in safely. Morton had a hit his first time up. Bennett, or rather Hampton, working from the stretch. Morton squares and offers with the bunt attempt, but really just to protect Bennett, who stole second. And now they tell me the pitch was called a ball. And they're asking for help, but the second base umpire had to be making the call down at second. So that pitch was called a ball now, and Bennett still second. Curveball is in there for a strike. So we're probably back where we should be. And a 1-1 pitch now to the cast center fielder is hit out toward left field. Left fielder chasing it back. He's going to make the catch over the shoulder and get the ball back in to the infield. So Bennett unable to advance. 
but Morton hit it pretty good. Zach Wilkin chased it all the way back and caught it over the shoulder for out number one. So the top of the order now due for the Colonels with one out. Brandon Etheridge will step in. He was hit by a pitch in the first and scored a run and then grounded out to first his second time up. And the first pitch he sees is low for a ball. Cast baseball presented by Mountain Dew. The Colonels leading it four to nothing here in the bottom of the fourth. Curveball by Hampton is drilled into the right field corner and that'll drive in a run and we'll see how far Etheridge will go as he rounds second, he trips up, but he's back in there safely. That's a couple of times in recent games we've seen Etheridge slip rounding second. But his double drives in Hunter Bennett and the Colonels are on top now, five to nothing. Shortstop Sam Ayers now will step in with one out. Ayers with an infield hit in the first, and he popped out to second, his second time up. Curveball hit just foul past the third base bag. So he hit it on the nose on the barrel of the bat, but pulled it just foul. or that would have been back-to-back -back doubles, most likely. So just a noisy strike now as Etheridge takes his lead down at second. And Hampton didn't like the sign. Ayers had had enough waiting time, so he stepped out, and we'll try again. Hampton comes set. And now we've got a balk call. So the balk will advance Etheridge over to third with one out. Still just one strike on the hitter as Ayers. Takes a pitch on the inside edge or just off the inside edge for ball number one. So Cass with three runs in the first, one in the second, now one here in the fourth, lead it five to nothing as they hit in the bottom of the fourth. Breaking ball to Ayers is fouled over near the Cass dugout. Brake chased it over there to the fence, but it's out of play. So with one out in the inning, we'll see a one-two pitch now to the cast shortstop. Etheridge taking his lead down at third, and the pitch from Hampton is ripped right over the top of the River Ridge dugout. Foul. Way out in front on that one. So we'll try the one-two pitch again. And he hits it on the ground out towards second, and it's booted out there by Ian Andrews. It was going to drive in a run anyway. So we'll give him the RBI, but that he does reach on the air. So that brings up the catcher, Chaz Wilson. Still just one out in the inning as Sam Ayers, who reached on that boot by the second baseman, takes his lead. And the first pitch to Wilson is a breaking ball that stayed outside.
Wilson flied out to center field and then singled into left. Past the diving third baseman. Throw over to first. Checking on Ayers, but he's back in. Dylan Williams, the first baseman, waits on deck. We get time called at the plate again. Wilson now looks down at Coach Adam Williams for the signs, and Ayers will take a lead at first. Hampton comes set, and the fastball is fouled away over the screen. So a 1-1 pitch now due to the cast senior catcher. And it's a pitch out. Ayers is running on the play, and he's going to slide in there safely with the stolen base. So even though they pitched out, they're unable to get Ayers, who was moving on the pitch, and still second base. So with one out, he's now in scoring position for Chaz Wilson. So a 2-1 pitch now due to Wilson. And it's a breaking ball that's in there for a strike. But Wilson was taking because Sam Ayers was stealing third. And I'm not sure if that's the reason why he was taking, but he took a curveball. And Ayers swipes third. So now a 2-2 pitch. To Wilson is a breaking ball hit on the ground out to third cable fields it off his chest throws across bounced it over there and it's scooped up by Bragg for the second out of the inning so really a good play on both ends as cable blocks the ground ball off his chest fields it after that throws across through low and his first baseman Bragg is able to dig it out for the second out of the inning airs unable to advance So that brings up Dylan Williams with two outs now and a runner at third. And he pops it up on the first pitch. So Bragg, Andrews, and the pitcher, Hampton, are all there. Andrews makes the catch for out number three. But the Colonels come up with two runs in the inning. They leave a man at third. We've now played four innings at the Cass High School Athletic Complex, and your Colonels lead River Ridge by a score of six to nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, if you got anything from me, it's to find your thing and do you. Because we all know it's not what you do, it's how you do. And this is how we do. Back at Cass High School where the Colonels lead River Ridge six to nothing as we go to the fifth inning. Brandon Etheridge back out on the mound for the Colonels to pitch here in the fifth, he was the starter. They've uh, played two innings in the Pickens-Gilmer game today. I don't recall where that one, I think that one is at Gilmer. Pickens leads Gilmer at the end of two innings by a score of two to one. As we check the away scoreboard here. Cass and River Ridge will play game three of this series at River Ridge Friday night over in Woodstock. River Ridge won game one last night, three to nothing, behind the strong pitching performance of Jackson Wieg, who in three 
sub-region games is 3-0 and and has only given up one run in those three games. So he's been very good in region play. And from what I could tell, has been good all year. Dylan Williams, who was 4-0 and going into that pitching matchup, was the tough luck loser for the Colonels as River Ridge scored three runs in the second to win that one three to nothing. A ball and a strike now to the designated hitter, Stanley. And another one right through there for a called strike. Austin Stanley flied out to center his first trip. And the one-two pitch from Etheridge hit on the ground over the third baseman's head into left field, and there's the first hit for the Knights this evening. So now the River Ridge head coach makes his way down to speak with the umpire. Looks like we're going to get another change here. Number five is there to hit. So we're going to get a pinch hitter. Taylor Connolly. And we're also going to get a runner down at first. Number 10. Is not on my lineup card. Zach Loveless. So I had Loveless as a starter in the game. So they're remo- they're, what they're doing is removing the designated hitter here. And Loveless will go down to run and will be entered in his own spot. So we're ready for action now. Cast leading at six to nothing. And River Ridge with their first hit of the game. Now with Loveless running down at first base. This is Taylor Connolly, and he looks at a breaking pitch for a strike. Curveball from Etheridge, I guess, stayed inside. So Etheridge working from the stretch here with the runner down at first. Throws a fastball that's hit in the air out toward left field. Hunter Bennett is there to make the catch for the first out of the inning. So now we'll get another hitter, this time for the catcher, Cable. That's number 23, Dylan Gates. And the first pitch to Gates is in there for a strike. So Loveless leads down at first. One out in the inning, they throw over, and Dylan Williams had to leap to keep that one from getting away. And now we'll get a timeout as Wilson wants to go out and talk to his pitcher. So Cass and River Ridge in game two of this three-game series, game three will be Friday night back at River Ridge. These two teams are 
tied currently for second place in seven quad A South. They're both one game behind Cedartown, who's six and three. These two teams are four and three. So as that works out in the standings, they are two games back in the win column, tied in the loss column, a one-game difference. Curveball bounced up there. Wilson blocked it to keep the runner at first. And the count has gone to one and one. Next one is in there for a strike. So with one out in the inning now, Etheridge is ahead, one and two. Etheridge working from the stretch, looks in and throws a curveball that missed low. Next pitch from Etheridge blew him away. Swung very late at that one, almost in the mitt of Wilson before he took his swipe. And there's two outs in the inning. And now we're going to get another change. This is number 28. Matthew Hamill will bat here for thick pin. So Matthew Hamill will bat in this spot for thick pin with two outs. Cast six runs on seven hits. River Ridge has one hit, no runs. The Knights have committed a couple of errors. Cast with no errors. First pitch to Hamill. Swung on and missed. Thanks for joining us. Cast Baseball presented by Mountain Dew on Play on Sports. Next one has popped up in the air. Wilson having trouble finding it. Now he does. Waits on it to come back to him and makes the catch for out number three. So the pop-up in foul territory to the cast catcher will retire the side here in the top of the fifth. River Ridge did get their first hit of the contest, but they leave that runner. We've played four and a half, and Cass leads River Ridge by a score of six to nothing. Back at Cass High School where the Colonels are coming in to bat in their half of the fifth inning up six to nothing. We'll get a new pitcher for the Knights. It will be Shane Parker. The third River Ridge pitcher to work in this one. Cass scored three runs in the first in that inning. Dylan Williams hit his first home run of the year, a two-run blast. Cass then added a run in the second inning, and then two more in the fourth. They bat here in the fifth, leading it six to nothing. The Colonels will send designated hitter Sam Russell, right fielder Alex Yoslin, and third baseman Hunter Southern to the plate.
So Russell strolls to the plate, and he will face the new pitcher, Shane Parker. who winds and delivers in there for a strike. Oh, one pitch from Parker, missed outside. So the count now at one and one as the Colonel's designated hitter leads off the fifth for Cass. Another breaking ball. Steady diet of those. It's in there for a strike. So Parker up. One, two on the count. And Russell just hit this one on a rope. All the way it'll roll to the wall. And he's going to stop at second with a stand-up double. So a solid line drive into the left center field gap that rolled all the way to the wall. And Sam Russell leads off the Colonel's fifth with a double. Brings up the right fielder, Alex Yoslin, who looks down to Coach Adam Williams for signs. Yoslin 0 for 2 in this one. Looks at a strike over the outside edge. Yoslin lined out to left field on a ball he hit very hard and then popped out to the second baseman in his other at bat. And this one he pops up, but it looks like it's going to make it out of play. And folks scatter in the stands as it lands in the near bleachers. So Yoslin's in an 0-2 hole now. Nobody out in the inning. Sam Russell, who led off the inning with a double, stands down at second. Hunter Southern waits on deck for the Colonels. Parker looks in and delivers a breaking ball that's popped over first base down there in foul territory, chased by several of the Knights, but it lands harmlessly foul and will reset everything once again. So nobody out in the inning. Sam Russell, who led off with a double, takes his lead at second, and the pitch from Parker is popped up again over near the first base dugout. It's going to make it over the screen. So we'll get another 0-2 pitch to the cast right fielder, Alex Yoslin. So Yoslin digs back in, and he gets another 0-2 pitch from Shane Parker that missed high. Cass now with eight hits in this one. They were hitting 297 as a team coming in, so they've improved that average. They're over 300 now for the season as a team. That pitch missed low and away. So Yoslin trying to get a piece of this hit parade. Sees a 2-2 pitch from Shane Parker that missed high for ball three. So after getting behind 0-2 and fouling off a few pitches, he's now worked the count back full. So we'll see what offering he receives from Shane Parker. It's a breaking ball that's in there for a called strike three. So a good pitch there by Parker strikes out Yoslin. And the cast junior third baseman Hunter Southern will step to the plate. Hunter 
Sam Russell still down there at second. With one out, he led off the inning with a double into the left center field gap, and now the catcher. Zach Cable wants to talk to his pitcher. So we'll get some more baseballs delivered to the home plate umpire from the cast dugout. Coach Adam Williams gets a chance to share some new signs with his base runner, Russell, and his hitter, Southern. And now Shane Parker will re-toe the rubber and look in, working from the stretch. Takes his sign, comes set, and throws a fastball that's fouled off by Southern. Southern walked in his first trip to the plate and flied out to center field. And his second at bat looks at a fastball high. So the count is at one and one. And now our home plate umpire will clean off home plate. Cast baseball presented by Mountain Dew. The Colonels leading it as they bat here in the bottom of the fifth. They lead it six to nothing. They have eight hits. River Ridge with only one hit thus far. Next pitch is a curveball called a strike. Southern, the number seven hitter in the order. Hunter Bennett, the left fielder, waits on deck. Fastball stayed low. So our count has gone to two and two. Russell taking a fairly short lead down at second. And a breaking ball is dribbled out in front of the plate. It's picked up in fair territory. Cable fires to first to retire Southern on a really good play by the Knights catcher. So a little swinging bunt there. Results in an out. But Russell moves over to third. So there's two outs in the inning. And Hunter Bennett steps to the plate, takes the ball low. Russell taking a lead down at third, and it's hit on the ground out toward third. Cable re- picks it up, but unable to throw out Bennett at first, and that will drive in a run. So the Colonels go up seven to nothing. Chris Morton, the center fielder, and the number nine hitter in the order step, steps in with two outs. Bennett takes his lead down at first. And he's off and running. First pitch is in there for a strike, and it won't matter because Bennett is thrown out trying to steal second. So the Colt stealing will retire the Colonels here in their half of the fifth. But they do pick up another run, and the Colonels lead the Knights after five innings by a score of seven to nothing.
We're headed to the top of the sixth inning. Cass leading River Ridge. Seven to nothing. We're in game two of a three-game series between the Colonels and the Knights. These two teams tied, currently tied for second in seven quad A South, both with four and three records in sub-region play. They trail.